about the Ross relationship because like people would even think like it's funny when you did the second album every thought everybody was fearful like what does it mean now is is Wally gonna make records over Rick Ross sounding tracks yada 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 and then now even with this third album it seems like he trusted you enough also to let even you do less, your vision right even less less involvement even right? less like Rose Rose good I'm a loyal nigga he could kick his feet up we're gonna get some money regardless we're gonna get money me gonna get money you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, Rocky, Eric, we gonna get money. I'm gonna help put the other nigga shit out in the camp. He gonna rap, like, when, by the time he 42, 43, or he, a real OG nigga, I'm, he gonna be able to be like, Wallace gonna do it, and he gonna break, help break these artists and shit like that. We got a lot of shit coming, yeah. a lot. I trust Ross, he trusts me, and Ross know I'm crazy, I'm crazy. Like, I ain't even talked to that nigga when I was making my project. He was texting me like, ha ha, you not picking up the phone, like, I, Cause I was on some, I was on some he shit. Must be like, some hits. I was on some shit. Like I was just like, I'm not talking to none of y'all. I'm gonna make this shit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna concentrate. And he trusts me. And and when I put it out, he stand behind it. You know what I'm saying? Ross, one of the most stand up niggas I've ever met in my life. And I've been in the industry for three years before I even met that nigga. And what, so that's why it worked for you to go to MMG after the disappointments in Interscope because he was, was trying to stand up. No, mom, let me be quiet. Cause no, go ahead. Shout out to Joey I.E. It's crown, love you it's crown, man. Have a drink, brother. <laughs> Elliot put the you ain't even know on my Cheers drink trying to get me free. spill my guts. I got my Jordans on, man. I never had wore Jordans in my life. I just man. feel like the, at that point in my life, I just feel like Interscope's focus wasn't on music for where I come from. Music for y'all. It was a day. I'm on my storytelling. Bill Cosby like shit, right? Storytelling is what we about. We so like it was a day, right? Um, I want to say it was me and Lil G. So when you when you you know when you when they don't got nothing else for you to do at a label, a lot of times they put you on the road and make you go to different radio stations and like talk and shit and smile and fucking <laughs> shuck and jive and shit, right? So I go to I was going I went to 92Q. This was a long time ago. I went to 92Q and I heard some shit that changed my fucking life. Cause I'm young at this point. I don't know nothing about the game. I'm just a nigga from DC. I'm just trying to figure it all out. So. We go on 92Q, and me and G is over there, and, and, and I hear the radio rap. They will send you with a radio rap to make sure you don't have a Wale moment, like a little motherfucking guidance counselor type nigga that <laughs> follows you around. So I heard him talking to the, to the nigga. At, I, I was eavesdropping. I heard him talking to the nigga on the radio. He was like, some, 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 some. We got to make sure Wale's black again. I said, what? So I, after it was over, after the shucking and jiving, we went back to the cop. Like, so, you know, I, I heard you when you said you want to make Wally. But he's like, no, no, no. This is just an urban station, and we haven't, the urban market doesn't know about you. I said, my nigga, I'm probably the blackest rapper in the game right now, and I come from the blackest city that exists. So why? And that's when I realized there's two different sides to the labels. They got this side and this side. When I first signed, they was doing this when they should have been doing this, but I ain't know because mm -hmm. I'm just a regular They're old like, one of these. Lady Gaga, let's go to Z100. Exactly. Oh, right. yeah, yeah. But I'm thinking like, oh, no, nah, this is creative because I'm working with Fader and I'm, doing, I'm, I'm learning the world with Mark Ronson. But they was trying to capitalize solely on the Mark Ronson connect and not worried about the messaging, the look, or the ideas that I have for black America as a whole. So when I figured that out, I was like, okay, I get why it don't work. Peace out. No hands drop. They wanted to figure it out all of a sudden. I was like, I'm cool. Ross was like, you know what? All these things that you just learned, apply them and you do your own shit. And you can come out in your own way and do your own shit. So I dropped the ambition, go, and now we on some new black soul shit. Because I, I wanted to ask you about new black soul. And I wanted to do it the whole time. I just didn't understand the game enough. A lot of niggas be rushing into that deal. You don't know nothing about these, this shit. This shit crazy for real. How did New Black Soul, like that's a phrase you come up with now to sort of describe some most of the sound on the album. Like, is that something that just naturally developed? And um, New Black Soul is uh And it's only epitom epitomized by like songs like Love Hate Thing, or you feel nah, like overall? Nah, you know what? Nope. Yeah. Because um you look at Love Hate Thing, Sunshine, Have an Afternoon. Like I could just shout it out when I do it. Number one, that's soul, like that's 90s era hip hop, CNN, motherfucking reasonable doubt. 
You know what I'm saying? Like that, that, that's Sean C and LV. You know, Sean C worked on um, Reasonable Doubt. Reasonable Doubt. Okay. That's the soul. That was the soul of the young, young urban American in the, in the late 90s, mid 90s. Love, hate thing. 70s soul. Sunshine, 70s soul. Heavens and Afternoon, 90s soul. Golden Salvation, early 2000s soul. Vanity, motherfucking 80s, 80s soul. Gullible, 70s soul. Like it's all through this joint. It's all through it. And I remember I want you to keep going. I wanted to, I remember I remember <laughs> talking to Jay about like he always told me like a lot of the albums that he came out with had an idea in his mind and it ended up becoming something else. Yeah. I never said this before and I don't want to give you rap niggas any ideas cuz I'm going to come back to this idea, but this was supposed to be an all album of like 90 so. That's yeah, why told I got me, stuck. He was like mid condition. He was like I'm doing mid condition, you know, I'm doing and, but it just became like soul in all genres. I told Neo, I said, yo, Neo, I need a hook that feels like Michael Jackson bad era. Not Thriller, not Motown, 70s, and all that shit. Like, I need bad era. I want to feel like I'm in a leather joint with the joint. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, with that move? So he, he gave me that on Tired of Dreaming. It sounds like some Michael, it sounds like he referenced it for Michael Jackson. And, um, and that's what New Black Soul is. I took all eras of soul and all elements of soul and, and put them on one project. What do you mean? What's the meaning behind the song Gullible? Shit. It, it, you know, the sad thing about it is, and I'm going to probably give some sick person an idea again right now, but whatever y'all say it is, it is. Whatever. Yeah. Somebody in this joint could be like, yo, five niggas in here could have an agreement and be like, Elliot Wilson is an alien. I saw him <laughs> land in the back. And then it's so. It's so, meaning it'll be picked up by blogs, it'll get picked up by other things, and it's so unfortunate because it's like, a nigga like me, I'm so like into this shit. I do it for the people so much that like, motherfuckers will use that against you. Motherfuckers will use like, all right, I can say this happened while I am put it out, media take out to pick it up. Some journalists wait to, for confirmation. You, I know you've been one of the people that don't no matter how juicy a story is, you'll wait till like you get a real confirmed joint. But like a lot of people just whatever, anything. You know what I'm saying? So I wanted to poke fun on that idea, like how America is just so consumed with like the juicy story and all that. Yeah. It's funny. I had a song called Center of Attention on my first album. It was a bonus cut. Mm -hmm. And it's it's kinda like a, a a spawn of that record right there. An extension of that. On Love Hate Thing, you said that it's what it's, you know, people can relate because it's about how when you get to shine comes a lot of passive aggressive hate, especially from those closest to you. Like, how do you deal with that? I mean, I, think, I feel like everybody's dealt with that. Everybody in here has dealt with like the hate that comes within your circle. And it's, not, it's almost like an understandable hate. Like, how could I be mad if I've been friends with a rapper for eight years or we went to school together and I made it this far? And they work in where, you know, they, their life is how they it is. Like, I can't even be mad at you because I would probably be mad. I know I'd be mad. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I know you still rock with me. I know you still fuck with me. But I, it's hard to see me winning like this. I know it is. It is. Like, when you get to that point, you got to imagine, close your eyes and imagine realizing your, your most intense dream. Whether it's owning a salon, making it to the NFL, making it whatever, whatever. You know your best friend's dreams. You know it. Whatever it is, you know your best friend's dreams. Imagine making it to your joint, winning at your joint, and your best friend's still trying to figure out, like, what they doing in life. That comes with it. That's something that nobody talks about. Nobody talks about. It's very rare that you, become, you can come rich and then you make everybody around you rich. So what happens when that don't happen? Yeah. I'm gonna tell you what happens. You lose friends, you make enemies, people start be growing this disdain for you that just won't go away until they reach where you at. It's real out here. I wanna talk about rotation, because on the surface it could seem like, oh, here's, an, here's another record about weed. Here's a weed, but to me, the hidden message is that you almost smoke sometimes to just zone out to, to deal with the stress of everything that comes with the drama in your life and everything. I'm high right now, Elliot, if you're asking me. <laughs> You're not really high right now, Florence. A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. But is that like almost like, the, is it therapeutic? Is that that really is sort of paying homage to that? That that helps you deal with it's the stress? It's real. It's just yeah. like, 
this music industry, I was, I, was, I was made, I was born, I believe in my heart, to make music in it. I don't know if I was born to be in it, though. Because it's not, it's not really my thing. Like, I know there's a fixed fight going on right now with this rap, with all these record sales and all that. I know that. I ain't really supposed to have no, like, crate. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I get it. Like, I deal with it, though. I take it in stride, you know what I'm saying? But, like, I'm, 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 a, high, I'm a loose cannon as far as, like, reacting and shit. Like, I know that now. Like, everybody knows that. You're not even cool for making fun of it no more because it's like, you already know why they go wild, nigga. So, I, I, I got to mellow myself out sometimes. I really do. Like, even right now, I'm, I'm thinking about 100 things. Man, I got an album coming out in two days. I'm thinking about Letterman. I'm thinking about the show tonight. I'm thinking about so much other things. I'm just trying to mellow out. And that's, that's what rotation about. And we talked about you DMX in the game. Like, you putting out another album after this with Jerry Seinfeld. It coming full about nothing. The album about nothing. Like, how crazy is that, that it comes full circle, that now you actually know Jerry Seinfeld, like, and have conversations with him. And now... I think the no. fans, more than anything, the fans deserve it. Because, yeah. you know, like, it's deeper than what people really realize. Like, the first album, uh, Mixtape About Nothing, was um, when I had just signed with Interscope. And that was, a lot of people don't know, that was the record that, that was the album that made Jimmy make me a priority. I didn't know it at the time, but that's what made him, like, okay, you know, this Mark Oh, because he liked that mixtape. That mixtape. Yeah, yeah. So, mixed, More About Nothing was when I lost my deal. I was there for that. More about nothing is when I, <laughs> I had no deal when I made it. So Biggest traffic there on Rap Radar still. That was the mixtape to make them want to sign me again. Yeah. Everybody. So more about nothing. What, ha what happens when you put me in a, a good spot? There's only one thing that I can do with that is, is get that number one spot with that more about nothing album or that album about nothing. That's all. That joint solidified my deal, then got me a deal. What's gonna happen when, I'm already, when I already got a deal and I'm, I'm making one? And I actually have Jerry Seinfeld at my disposal. Yeah. Number one spot. How do you get that? Like, and then what's it like? Is that a, is that a, does that take time to develop? Everything that I'm giving to you all right now, I gave to him as far as talking wise. Like, yeah. people are either gonna fuck with Wale or they not. You know, and the people that fuck with me, I pray to God that they fuck with me twice as hard for every motherfucker that don't. Why don't some people fuck with you? Why don't some people give you I'm real. I'm real. I'm real. I'm I'm real. I thank you, Cosign. Whoever said that. <laughs> I'm not really into like that. Like it's too much work for me to be fake. It's like I sweat. I don't want to fucking work out, nigga. I'm just I'm gonna tell you what it. I'm not want to think about what I'm gonna say. Who want a life like that? You gotta think about what you're gonna say. Yeah. So it's just real. Like I'm not going sugar. I'm not gonna do none of that. Like and a lot of motherfuckers don't like that. Especially in a in a game where like, in some instances, the faker you are, the, the more successful you are. This shit like it's transparent. Like if you really open your eyes and look at what's going on in, in our culture, like that fake shit goes a long way. And you know when you when you try to be real and you try to be honest and try to be yourself, you get shunned a lot. But whatever, I'm but good. Do you think those qualities is what help you become the person out of the district to be the one to sort of open these doors and be? It's still know. real though. Still real, like you know, we 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 appreciating like reality less and less as the years go on, especially in hip hop. Like they they accept anything. Like I'm just real. Like you know, I'm not trying to like fit into a specific like category to be liked. It's just I give you my heart, I give you my feelings, I give you what's on my mind. If you accept it, God bless. If not, 